I go to school in Eastern Washington, and one of the really interesting things about Eastern Washington is that it's covered in about 6,000 feet of basalt. Basalt is a pretty nondescript black rock which, at least in Walla Walla, fills the architectural niche that limestone does in the Midwest. It is literally everywhere. It's also an igneous rock, which forms when magma quickly rises to the surface and then cools rapidly. For example, volcanic islands like Hawaii are almost entirely composed of basalt. With this in mind, let's revisit one of my first points. Eastern Washington is covered in about 6,000 feet of basalt. 6,000 feet is the depth of the Grand Canyon, and all of that was once lava flowing over the countryside. Imagine a lava flow that large, a literal ocean of lava. This is what Eastern Washington looked like periodically between 17 and 14 million years ago. Now I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of lava. Now imagine 23 times as much lava erupting in a third of the time. That is the Siberian Traps. The term Siberian Traps refers to a massive basalt plain which today covers about 2 million square kilometers in northern Russia. But 250 million years ago, it was the largest volcano that we know of. That age is important because that places this particular eruption at one of the biggest extinction events in the history of the planet. The Permian extinction killed around 90% of all life on Earth. This extinction left the world completely barren and set the stage for the development of the dinosaurs in the Triassic. Like almost all things that happened so long ago, nobody is actually sure that the traps were the main cause of the extinction, or if the extinction just made some other already bad situation worse. The general consensus, however, is that massive amounts of lava, heat, greenhouse gases make for some fairly uncomfortable living environments. The main debate is instead concentrated on the cause of such a massive volcano. The typical explanation for this kind of event is that a huge plume of magma from deep in the earth pushed through and broke the surface, or some other form of tectonic activity split the crust. In this particular case, these hypotheses are difficult to describe and defend because most models we currently have of the movement of the mantle show that plumes of magma large enough to do this sort of damage should not, cannot, and do not exist. This presents a problem for the geologists trying to explain the event, and when scientists start banging their head against a problem, some interesting solutions often come out. Which brings me to my favorite scientific hypothesis ever. Early on, there were some suggestions that an asteroid hit the area, which broke through the crust and allowed magma to flow out. But there is no evidence anywhere in the area that anything with large enough size to break the crust ever hit the area. While some scientists continued to work on the mantle plume idea, other scientists decided that the solution to this problem may in fact lay in Antarctica. Underneath the ice in Antarctica, there is what geologists have now basically determined is a crater about 243 kilometers in cross and at least 848 meters deep. Given the size of the crater, the impactor would have had to have been at least four times the size of the one that likely killed the dinosaurs, making at least 40 kilometers or 24 miles across. Since this crater is under an impenetrable sheet of ice and we can't get direct samples or images, the best estimate of its age is between 500 million and 100 million years old. While that range definitely includes the time that the Siberian traps formed, it also covers a lot of time in which they weren't forming. I know this hardly sounds like a convincing argument. How does a crater in Antarctica have anything to do with a volcano that may or may not have happened around the same time in Russia? This is where it gets interesting. 250 million years ago, all the continents were lumped together in what is known as Pangaea, but more importantly, all of our current models of tectonic plate movement indicate that 250 million years ago, the area where the Siberian traps formed and the crater in Antarctica were on exact opposite sides of the planet. This has been used by some theorists as evidenced in support of a pre-existing theory that if a meteor impact is large enough, the convergence of seismic waves on the opposite side of the planet can cause intense volcanism. Basically, an asteroid punched the Earth so hard that it cracked the other side of the planet. This theory is just so ridiculously fantastic that it narrowly beats out the fission hypothesis for the origin of the moon as my favorite scientific hypothesis ever. It just seems like such an audaciously crazy notion, but not only is there no way for them to really disprove the idea, save an actual asteroid hitting the Earth, there's actually a small pile of evidence suggesting that it might actually be true. It's really my favorite part about science. While there seem to be all sorts of crazy theories from all over the place, the fact is that all theories are crazy until one of them's right. I do need to say a quick word of clarification. This is currently an incredibly controversial hypothesis. There aren't 
currently very many people backing this idea. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. None of the other suggested causes are particularly convincing as of yet, but as we learn more about the workings of the inside of our planet, that may yet change.